Before the Last Snowflake Falls by Garden underscore Hearts 386. It has 54,826 words and it's eight chapters. Summary. The summer had been hot, beyond anything anyone has seen. Popsicles melted faster than usual, roads nearly popped tires, and training had become more of a bitch than usual to the heroic students. But it was productive. But it was productive, distracting. Izuku never minded, because at least with everything that had kept him busy, he was away from his anxiety and reminders of isola- isolation and bad habits. But things are always complex and, well, consistent. Six of the blaring heat, a villain with ve- weather powers, releases what Japan may consider one of the worst blizz- blizzards in history. All while in the month of June, when all of those distractions are suddenly stripped, leaving Izuku in isolation with his class in the dorms for a well-deserved break. Those broken bad habits soon mold back into his hands, but compared to his early years, people around him actually begin to pay attention, including a rather persistent blonde. Um, the author's note, I think it's quite funny. Throws the most co- toe-curling angst at you and runs away. Um, read by Alalo. Chapter 1. Bad Habits. Izuku had gone to bed sweating. The month of June clearly hadn't come to fuck around, even though it should be considered one of the cooler summer months. Huh. Everyone knew global warming was getting worse each day, week, month, and year past, but it still manages to create a countrywide shock to see the temperature re- reach above 89 and stay above uh, 98 and stay above 98. Izuku walked through the city one early afternoon and watched four people's shoe salt melt off. Yes, he counted. He decided af- to after the poor contestant number two re- tripped and fell onto the burning hot asphalt wi- after his flip-flop sh- superglued itself to the ground. It's been a torturous couple of weeks. All the teachers had been forbidding the students to train in costume if possible to avoid the chance of a heat stroke or, for Kachan's sake, spontaneous combustion. Lord knows they don't need any more opportunities for a lawsuit. Zuku, if he's being honest. Izuku is, if he's being honest, thankful because he ha- still has yet to come up with a summer version of his own costume. With all the support he needs, it's a bit difficult not to die of heat exhaustion even in the winter months. Izuku had gone to bed sweating. Sweating beads, if he was being pre- specific, but he was... Went to bed tired enough from a full packed day. Izuku had gone to bed sweating. So why the hell did he dream of? Did he dream cold, feeling like the beads of sweat on his forehead had suddenly turned to ice? Cold hands hold Izuku's cheeks like a deli- delicate mug of coffee. Stroking the side, with. A thumb, wiping away on straight tears, if not condensation. His hands are cold. So, so cold, his breath is visible, leaving a trail in the air. He doesn't remember this memory being so cold. The kids wouldn't let me play with them outside, Dad. It's such a strange feeling. Bizarre, hot fire full of dread in his chest and under the skin as the slow world slows, as time slows. I know, Bubba. If I can't be a hero, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do. Time is still moving, still wary. Yet, as each second decomposes and passes, it feels like he's being frozen into place. You'll find a way to distract yourself, Izuku. I'm afraid that's all you can do. Everyone's doors fling open in almost in sync. Something isn't right, and Izuku could see it on everyone's blue lips and the slight shiver in their summer PJs. He could feel it from his own sniffle and frozen fingers. What the 
hell is going on? Tokoyami said, shaking from what looks like to be icicles off his feathers. Izuka swallows, unaware of how he's supposed to respond because he's because he too has no idea what the hell is going on. He tries to rub his hands together to warm them up, but it doesn't do much for him. Did they blast the air last night? Did Todoroki's quirk malfunction? I don't, he starts before hearing his phone start to blow up from notifications on his desk, glancing at his classmates as he turns his back into his room to grab it before it buzzes off the tabletop. Immediately, Yuzuku is greeting Re- greeted by missed calls, new al- news alerts, school alerts, and way too many texts from his class's group chat. Rubbing his hands over his face and down to his mouth, Izuku stands with his phone in his hand in the middle of his room, confused and still groggy from just waking up. It doesn't help that it's so cold. Why is it so cold? The first notification he clicks on is Uraraka, and it's recent. He calls her and it takes two rings for her to pick up. Deku! Zuka flinches from the volume. Whoa, Uraraka, what's going on? Are you okay? She sounds frazzled, if not completely spooked. What? She says back. Dude, have you not even looked out the window? Izuka physically pauses. Why would he need to look outside? Walking towards the window, he rips his curtains to the side and is immediately blinded by bright white. He winces, squinting to try and ease the intensity. Deku, hello? His jaw drops once his eyes focus, leaving him holding his phone away from his ear. What? Snow. Every inch of ground, vegetation, and everything is covered with pure white, and it's not a pretty winter wonderful Wonderland white, it's a dangerous white that can only be caused by a howling blizzard that rips through the trees trees and kills people within minutes of exposure. You see it too, right? I'm not crazy. I, he stutters, closing the curtains. I see it too. He hangs up the phone before she can even get in another word. What the fuck? What? His door opens and he spins around with flinch. Victoria, Oyama is holding his door open and shivering with a blanket wrapped around his shoulders. Minette and Tokoyami are behind him doing the same. Sensei wants us downstairs. Aizawa Sensei looks like a cold, wet, and pissed off cat when Izuku sees him. He's waiting for the class downstairs, holding himself close in a thick, puffy jacket still covered in snow and leaves. His hair is a mess and he looks terrible. Jesus, you look like shit. Kachan pops up at someone as soon as everyone's an- ha- eyes lands on him. Yeah, well, I feel like shit, he grumbles, refusing to even take his jacket off. Sensei, what is going on? <laughs> I love his voice. Uh, Ida asks, raising his hands above everyone else's he- heads. Izuku can tell that he's also not dealing well with the cold based on how his hands won't stay still like it usually does. The class nods, crossing their arms in hope that it to stay a bit warmer. Some glance at Todoroki, but he just looks back confused. Hey, I may hate my dad, but not this much. Izuku catches Ashido in the corner of his eye, holding Suyu close with two blankets wrapped around her. She looks drowsy, barely awake, and obviously fighting off forced hibernation. Sensei pulls off his hood pulls his hood off and shakes out his soggy hair in an attempt to feel a little less gross. It clearly doesn't help because it sticks to his forehead and he frowns. Seems like a villain who whoever was sick of this heat more than us, he sighs. <sighs> a weather weather based quirk released this released a winter storm early this morning and it shows no sign of stopping. The class groans. Izuku finds himself Izuku himself finds a cringe on his lips. Sure, the heat was deemed sufferable by a lot of people, including himself, but even this is a lot. Do we have any idea on who to blame yet? Yayurosi asks, teeth chattering. Their teacher shakes his head. No, but we currently have Every hero physically able to move through this 
weather looking as we speak. But as you'd expect, it's taking a while because these conditions are ridiculous. I'd second that, Sarah shakes his head. It's freezing in here. I can't imagine being outside. The heat should be on soon. It's just delayed because our entire system got f- fried, their teacher adds right after. In the meantime, Yairasu, you don't mind. If you don't mind, I will need you to create a couple of space heaters for the rooms to warm them up. She nods. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Sensei moves his eyes to the general location of the class. In the meantime, you should all stay in the common space. It may sound dumb, but you all, to you all, but the body heat will help as much, uh, as well as the blankets and other accommodations. Till we get the heat on. Izuku hears Kachan click his tongue, annoyed. He doesn't blame him. How long will things be like this? Kirishima asks, glancing at his classmates. I assume we aren't allowed to leave, considering you almost died getting here and you're a two-minute walk away. Sensei shoves his hand into his pockets and sighs. Long. That's the rough part, considering the... Conditions are so aggressive we have no lead, there is. And there is possibly a limit on this quirk, I would expect at least a... And there is probably a limit on the quirk. I would expect at least a week, if not longer. What? Everyone yells, nearly startling their teacher in the process. Izuku feels his face pale. How? Kirishima groans, covering his face with his hands. There is no way. Whoever is responsible has completely altered the weather patterns around the city. Until we find the person responsible or someone else with a weather quirk strong enough to reverse this storm, we're stuck waiting. Aizawa and Sensei interrupts him before he can finish. A week, if not more? Waiting around inside has never re- really been, well, Izuku's favorite thing in the world. Zuko swallows. He was supposed to work on Black Whip with All Might this week and the next. The class was going to go to the pool and do another training day since they had Friday off. He was supposed to go to his usual cafe to study for his exams since he finished all his homework. There was so much he was supposed to do and needed to distract himself to keep him away from something smacks into his ribs and he snaps his head to the side. It scares him a little, and he almost yelps. Iriraka is looking at him with a raised eyebrow. Are you okay? She whispers. You're muttering, and but in kind of a panicky way. Izuku curls his mouth. The mouth curls into a small and short smile. He nods, trying not to make it look forced, but he's probably failing. Yeah, sorry, I'm just shocked, I guess. Iriraka smiles back concerningly. All right. Fuck. He hasn't slowed down once, not even taking, really taking a break. Not since the day All Might picking, picked him to inherit his power. It's embarrassing to say that the only times he'd had breaks were when he was hospitalized. Mizuku scratches at his wrist, looking back to Aizawa sensing and tuning back in. I don't care what you guys do, just don't burn the place down. Take it as a well-deserved break or whatever before your upcoming exams. Sensei pauses. You should be good with food and supplies in the kitchen, but please message us if you're running low or need anything. Don't be surprised if the power goes out. Just give us a call and we'll get it fixed. Is there anything else you need from us, Sensei? Izuku speaks before thinking, and his tone comes off as a plea. He gets a head shake in response. No problem, child. All of you, all I need for you is to stay put. He eyes Izuku strongly. Got it. Izuku avoids eye contact, nodding. Yes, sensei. He knows that was a direct call out, but he won't make a comment. The class nods their heads. Yes, sensei. Good, the teacher says, adjusting himself in his coat. I need to go back and get things situated in our building, but... Do what I say for once. Enjoy with your free, t- free time, kids. Thank you, Sensei. Most of the class mutters as the teacher pus- pushes through the door into a mess of cold white. 
The door swings open from the wind. This Ida has to run and grab the door, slamming it shut because it nearly ran out because it nearly ran into the store with him. He turns around, already need ready for a day of nothing. All right, class, like Sansei said, let's all head up to the head to the common room and get those space heaters made. Yeah, yeah, you got it, Prez. Sero says, rolling his eyes with a salute. Everyone is still in their pajamas. <laughs> Izuka becomes fully aware that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, and he crosses his arms over the which, over his chest with, bears a very cringy All Might Second Generation Limited Edition T-shirt. That was a long word. This is going to be a long week. Thanks for getting those space heaters set up, Momo. Ashida sighs with a relief, holding her hands in front of them. In front of them, with Tsuyu next to her, already perking up a little. It was no problem, she replies shyly. She looks exhausted. There's no doubt, really. Zuko knows Yairosu runs off the li- lipids in her body, and it's really early in the morning. There's a very low chance that he's eaten. No one has yet. His knee bobs on the couch and he picks his skin around his nails, ripping off a big chunk. So Uraka starts, but Izuku jumps out of his seat and startles her. Anyone want anything to eat? I think the electricity's working fine, minus the heat, Izuku says, practically bouncing like a hyper dog. He glances at Yairoshi and she relaxes, looking relieved. Lord knows that he would appreciate little acts like this in middle school. Uh, sure, yeah, I'd love something, Raka blinks, still a little taken, taken back. Are you planning on making breakfast? He nods, turning towards the kitchen. Yeah, I'm just, uh, hungry and I thought I'd offer. He's not hungry. To be honest, he hates eating early in the morning because it makes him nauseous. And he would be lying if he said he wasn't doing this just for Yairosu's sake. No one responds fast enough, so he buys a slip and opens the cabinet, grabbing a skillet. He takes a breath and turning with a small, turning with a small smile. How about pancakes? A hand grabs Suzuki's shoulders and he jumps, nearly throwing the sponge, especially he was cleaning. Sud, suds fly up, and hits his shirt. Oh shit! Sorry, I've got to stop doing this to you. Uraka winces, holding her hands up as he turns to look at her. Izuku takes a breath, fighting the urge to grab his chat heart. What's up? he asks, turning back to the sink. The water is freezing and having a hard time warming up. He's gonna have to remember to keep the sink on a little so the pipes don't freeze and later bust. Are you okay? Seriously? she asks, leaning her back against the counter and holding her plate to him. He grabs it, setting in in the sink. He raises a brow and rolls her eyes. He raises her brow and she rolls her eyes. You cooked everyone breakfast, all 20 of us, and you insisted you cleaned every dish even though Ida almost fought you to do it himself, she chuckles, clearly remembering when Ida nearly tackled him to do the dishes. Izuku almost scuffed him like a cat. You also seemed a little bit skittish ever since Sensei said we were stuck here. Izuku shakes his head, getting the spatula on the drying rack. Yeah, I'm fine, don't worry about me, he gives her a quick glance. I just like to be helpful and I'm a bit antsy. Oh, slight fib. Okay, she says, trailing off. Well, breakfast was great as always, and let me know if you need any help, Deku. She pats his shoulders. We are going to watch a movie till the heat turns on, so come on and join us when you're done, okay? He smiles. You got it. As soon as she leaves, his smile falters and he turns back to do the dishes, zoning out as he, zoning out as he soaks the pan. He starts to try and think about what can, he can do this week, how he can keep himself busy. He could study, but he already knows that if he overstudies, it will do him no good mentally. Maybe he will go all might a call after this? 
If Zuko feels a strong presence sneak from the side, if it weren't for the warmth and familiar smell of sugar and Mitsuki's laundry deterrent, he would have jumped like with Uraka earlier. Messy morning hair and a faded skull t-shirt are the first things he sees when he turns his head. Oh, a tired mutter. Kachan is scraping the tiny remains of a pancake of pancake off his place into the trash, setting it by the small pile on the counter. He's being oddly gentle right now. If even he even was earlier too when he took the food Izuku made he he even was earlier too when he took his took the food Izuku made without any question, comment or argument. He blinks, looking at the blonde. Izuku knows everything ever since their childhood. Kachan has been a quiet and cooperative person in the mornings. It's one of the things that stayed consistent with him. Sure things have been a bit better between them lately and ever since the last semester Things have become more casual, training, little conversations in the kitchen, even studying in the lounge. It was slow-paced, but better. Actually talking about your feelings helps. Shocker. Even though even this was odd, and it took him by surprise. Izuku raises his brow. Okay? Kachan mutters again. It's so soft it almost scares Izuku. What was that, Kachan? Kachan scowls, shaking his head. I said you're slow as fucking shit. It's annoying. Okay, that's normal. Okay, he narrows his eyes, looking back down at the sink and the sud floating around each dish. Kachan walks off quietly, leaving Izuku with a raised brow. There is definitely something stirring within this winter air. Izuku... Izuku's writing in his journal in his room when his phone buzzes. He hates it to say he hates to say it's a habit, but he sees the collar and snatches it by ring two. All night, he says cheerfully, setting down his pen and leaning back in his chair. My boy, how are you doing? His mentor responds, sounding chipper as always. Uh, Izuku wants to say he's doing the best he can given the situation. That he is itching to go on a run or even bake something for God's sake when he's not <laughs> the greatest by a long shot. But he doesn't. I'm doing pretty good, he lies. Though it's going to be weird not training or doing school for once. All my chuckles. Oh, I know you're buzzing to get out, kid. You and I both. A pause. But I think you need a break. And unfortunately, it took the weather to tell you to do so. Izuku bites his lip, ripping off a piece of skin. It stings and he can already taste the blood forming. I'm fine, all might. I know I can handle everything. <sighs> a sigh. I know you can. That's what worries me, you know? Izuku clears his throat and looks off to the side, itching to move on from this conversation. How are things over in the teacher dorms? All my is quiet for a long second. Boring, he says with a small chuckle. But Midnight and I are playing a game to see how long it takes for Mike and Aizawa to slip up and flirt out in the open. Aren't they married? Izuku questions. Or at least dating. I'd be surprised if they weren't. Ha! I would be stabbed in my sleep if I disclosed that information, kid. Izuku shakes his head, smiling. Don't worry, I'll find out eventually. I know you will, young Midoriya. His teacher laughs. It's quiet for a moment between the two of them. Well, it's getting late, my boy. Better get off to bed, o- bed okay? Okay, all night, he says, wishing he could stay on the phone with him all night. Or till he drifts to sleep. Good night, Midoriya. Night, all night. Zuko presses the red button, tossing his phone to the side. He sighs, leaning forward so he can rest his head on his hands. He turns, adjusting himself so that his... Hand rests on his cheek. His curtains are still shoved to the side, revealing the grey clouds that are still and still falling snow. It's calmed down a little, but not enough to show signs of stopping. It hasn't even been a day. Though the circumstances are sour, he won't lie. 
The snow is pretty in its own way. It never snows like this in Japan, or not at least not in these parts. Sure, they get snowfall and and the ice and the chance to bundle up in warm clothes, snow days and rough traffic. But this kind of weather is far from. But this kind of weather is far from normal. It's almost intriguing. Do other countries get this sn- snow like this normally? It's even more interesting to think someone's quirk has the ability to create such a storm. The ability to shut off an entire ta- town down like it's a plague. It, that makes Suzuka's head turn back to his notebooks. He grabs his pen. There is a general assumption that the person responsible simply was tired of the unbearable heat. But what if that wasn't the case? He flips to a new page, tapping his chin. Snowstor- snowstorms are especially not lock people inside, isolate the general population and hinder heroes or any, anyone from that matter doing their jobs. Crops die, heating and electricity become finicky, and plumbing can burst and lead to lack of water sources. People can freeze, th- freeze to death if stuck or suffer from frostbite, which has irreversible effects. People with animal quirks can't can even go into forced hiberna- hibernation, Suyu, for example. Not to mention, with the roads in such bad conditions, people aren't able to get food or resources socially. Seasonal depression is imminent with the cloud cover and lack of vitamin D. Emergency vehicles can't travel fast enough, even with the snow plows that are doing the best they can. There's no end to the issue to the issue storms like this cause. If you put it in the wrong hands, a weather quirk like this can kill thou- hundreds if not thousands of people all at once. It's incredible if not utterly th- terrifying. Who knows what will happen within a week of this current storm. God, what if... I swear to God, Midoriya, these walls are so thin I can hear everything you're saying and your muttering is unbearable. Minetta's voice calls out from the other side of the wall, muffled. Go to bed. God, I hate Minetta. Izuku habitually habitually snap, slaps a hand over his mouth, though there is no one in his room to see. Sorry, he responds with a fin- wince. The deja vu hits hard. He hasn't muttered like that in a while. Jeez. Looking down at his notebook, he glances at the absolute chicken scratch of thoughts before closing it. He scratches his head and rumps his cracked lips with his fingers. His eyes find his clock, noting that it's a bit past ten. He's not even tired, or on a usual school night he'd be knocked out cold by nine for, from exhaustion. His knee bobs as he pinches his bottom lip for a moment. In middle school, he'd be up for hours, if not full nights, because he developed bad insomnia from... Yeah. He never had healthy distractions or a way to exercise consistently. He never had friends either to keep him busy. It's almost funny how quiet the long nights are and how much louder the internal thoughts are. Izuku shakes his head, shoving shoving himself up and out of his chair. He needs to do something to clear his head. Shower, pace, write, read, meditate, and God, he hates being in his room. He decides to go with the idea of showering, walking to the bathrooms, and turns the water in strips. Luckily, the uh, the heating is working better now and doesn't take too long for the water to steam and burn his skin when he touches it. He takes a 30-minute shower, trying not to feel bad for using up all the hot water. To be honest, he wasn't... It wasn't on purpose entirely. He zoned out about halfway through washing his hair, only realizing that he was close to dissociating when he got soap right in his eye. Sighing, Izuku wipes a streak of steam off his mirror and stares at himself. The drain drips, itching at his ears as he brushes his wet hair from his face. It'll be okay. The week will go by fast and there will be no issues. He has friends this time. Maybe they will have to distract him. Oh, who is he kidding? He's never been the type to hang out with people. But he'll be fine. He'll be fine. 
he won't relapse, right? Izuku shakes his head, appalled by that sudden thought. If he even thinks about it, he will start scratching at his skin like an addict and run straight for the box under his bed. He grounds, turning and opening his bathroom door to get out of the thicker air. Of the thicker air? I don't know. He dresses and checks his clock. Fuck, it's not even 11 yet. He's not tired, not even slightly. Izuku is too anxious and, well, aware. If he even gets... If he even tries to go to sleep, he will just end up staring at his ceiling for hours, and that's just torture. Maybe he can go downstairs and make some tea. His phone buzzes, and it's just a text this time. Raising his brow, he grabs it to look at the ID, only to see that it's the class group chat. Oh god. The class 1A shithole. Kaminari. The cold weather has fucked up my nose, so now I must breathe through the respiratory. Ashido. Kami, that wasn't a correct sentence. The Ruraka. Hello? Kaminari. I am having a stroke. Bakugo. Congratulations. Kaminari. Thank you. Midoriya. Kachan, why are you awake? Bakugo. None of your fucking business, Kirishima. Aw, Grandpa is cranky because his phone woke him up. Bakugo, kill yourself, Kirishima. Aye aye, Captain. Salute emoji. Kirishima. Anyway, moving on. Midoriya. Kirishima. <laughs> Bakugo. Why are you awake, shit nerd? Juro, do I sense care? Bakugo, I will literally kill you and then myself. Kaminari, wow, double whammy this time. Juro, square up, mommy issues, you won't. Ashido, uh, smiling emoji, I think it is. Kirishima, Juro, stop, he actually, he might actually do it. Midoriya. Oh, dear God. Also, I'm just not tired yet, okay? Tokoyami. Clearly, none of us are. Bakugo. Well, that's obviously a fucking excuse, but go off, Deku. Uraraka. Hello? Todoroki. What is going on? Suyu. Violence. Midoriya. Kachan, why does it matter? Jiro, here we go. Why did I say it like that? Bakugo, because you're being a fucking hypocrite? You dense piece of shit? Midoriya, do you want to try that again? Kaminari, bruh. Ida, everyone go to bed, it is late. Sero, uh oh, the crab has been awoken. Sero, awaken? Awoken? Kirishima. Eh, tomato, tomato. Kirishima. Ka- uh, Kaminari. Pussy, pussy. Midoriya. What? Jiro. What? Kaminari. You know, pussy, pussy, but like, tomato, tomato. Jiro. There is no alternate pronunciation of pussy, Kaminari. Kaminari. Pussy. Oh my god. Ashido. I'm sorry? Kirishima. Nobody says pussy unless they're French, Kaminari. Jairosu. That is absolutely not correct, but good try. Kirishima. How would you know? You're not French. Kaminari. Yeah, and we all know French people don't really exist. Aoyama. I beg your pardon? Ashido. Oh shit. Ida. Enough! Midoriya. I'm just gonna. Buck go. Jesus fucking Christ. Kaminari. Come on, you love us, Kashan. Midoriya. Oh yeah, I'm leaving. Bye. Buck go. Get fucking bent, Sparky.
Izuku shuts off his phone before he can read what happens next. He can only handle the group chat for so long. He sighs, grabbing a towel, his towel and throwing it into his bathroom while turning off its light and fan. Tea sounds good. Maybe it will ha- help him to drift off, drift off easier. Grabbing his room key and his slippers, he steps out, still holding his now silenced phone. As Izuku shuffles down the hall and towards the elevator, he glances down at his phone. Something is itching at him like an uncut tag at the back of his neck. The group wasn't acting out of the ordinary, no matter how much it appears at the opposite, but something about Kachan. Izuku clicks his tongue. It's probably nothing, most likely the usual banter and cranky behavior. But still. Izuku presses the elevator button, surprised when it immediately dings open. He steps in, exhaling. Something about that conversation was just bugging him more than usual. School was getting worse, and it wasn't even third year, not just because the teachers had been harsher on midterm grading or caught on getting nastier in the halls and outside of school grounds, burning his clothes till they fell apart. School was getting worse because Izuku didn't know how to cope properly. The school nurse, for some reason, pities him, told him he's definitely got some bit of anxiety if not other form of mental illness. It sounded scary to hear that from an adult. He thought he wasn't normal in the head on top of his abnormality within the crooked society. She pointed it out when her eyes caught his bobbing knee, distant stare and skin picking. How he made sure to keep his presence so small she barely noticed him in the main office, but no, there was no way he does it because of anxiety. He just does it because he has no other choice but to distract himself or make others realize he doesn't exist. He told the nurse that he was okay, but she wouldn't let him leave until she told him to find better coping mechanisms. To find a hobby or something that helps keeping him distracted from dissociating or picking at his skin till it bleeds. He told her he had plenty of hobbies, walking out after getting bandages and a shitty school ice pack. He doesn't leave home, not unless it's his mom or for school. But he doesn't want to admit that to her. I'm home, Izuku calls, kicking off his shoes as he shuts the door. There is no response back. Mom? He throws his backpack on the couch before walking into the kitchen. There's a small slip of paper on the table and he doesn't and he doesn't need to look at it to know his mom is out. Probably working late tonight, as always. Distracting herself till it, she drops. Izuku opens the fridge to find a Tupperware with the dinner in it and a little sticky note with heating instructions. He's not hungry. He usually isn't. Shutting it, he walks out of the kitchen and heading up to his room, ignoring his school bags on the couch. He spends the next couple of hours just sitting in his room, almost wishing that he was telling the truth when he said he had hobbies. He doesn't count the writing in his notebook because that can always take him so far. All that runs through his head can can be too much to write down on paper, too much to acknowledge. He sets up from his bed, letting his feet fall to the ground so they can bob up and down. God, he probably looks crazy. Groaning with frustration, Izuku grabs his hair and pulls. He feels like he is stuck somewhere because of a pandemic, the plague. God, he can easily go for a walk or for a run. He can go to a coffee shop and people watch, but he just... His mind is screaming, but his body won't move the way he wants to. It's like he it knows there is no point. But if he, if he tried, he will just feel so fucking lonely, no matter what. He's trapped, and he needs something to make this torturous thing called time go by faster. Hizuku goes back downstairs into the kitchen. Maybe if he eats or makes tea or coffee, something... Or something, it will help kill some time. He swings the fridge door open a little too fast and it smacks into the cabinets. He winces but stops when an unusual clanking sings behind the cabinet he hit. Raising a brow, he shuts the fridge and reaches for the cabinet handle, pulling it open. Cups, bowls, the usual stuff in there. But what he heard... Izuku stands on his toes, looking above the dishes, when a glint of gold and crystal catches his eyes. What the hell? 
climbs up onto the counter and starts pushing up, pushing stuff out of the way, seeing some stuff, setting some stuff down on the counter beside him. That's when he sees it. His dad sold whiskey bottles, half full and some untouched. Boxes of cigarettes in the shiny silver lighter. He knows those are his too just by looking at the brand and at the symbol of the lighter. A dragon. Izuku slips apart as he reaches forward to grab the lighter, stroking a thumb over the carved design. He feels each groove and untouched spots of soot left behind, ready like it was just used yesterday. His father loved that thing, and Izuku always find it ironic, it, if not sort of funny. Even though he could spit fire like the dragon on his lighter, he still used it every single day, lighting a cigarette, an occasional joint, even though his mother still doesn't know, like it was his last, savoring the flame by his fingertips. He used to say that, he used to say the badass cowboys in pre-quirk ages would do it that way so he just had to do it as well. He also used to say it somehow felt better do doing things like a normal human being. God, his mom hated it when he smoked. Hated that he insisted... Hated that he insisted he killed himself slowly with his expensive, nearly, neatly rolled tobacco. But his dad always argued back with a sweet smile. She said it helped pass the time. It's funny that she still has this part of him even though he died and kept even after he died she kept even his worst of, worst of habits because they were his ever since he died he she hasn't been the same less present less loving short and bitter more distracted he genuinely genuinely cannot tell if she is angry at the world or angry at his father for leaving this earth even though it wasn't his fault. Either way, she hasn't been the same mother since he passed away a couple of years ago. Izuku takes a breath before grabbing one of the boxes of his cigarettes. He slides off the counter and puts back the bowls and cups neatly, as if never disturbed. He looks down at the box, flicking open the top. His mother always makes sure to drill it into his brain that smoking was a bad habit, an even worse hazard for your health. He knows it's bad, God, he knows. But the way Zuku could just see the stress and anxiety melt right off his dad's shoulders as soon as he pressed the slips to his cigarette. The way he always wished he could feel the same feeling of euphoria with him. And everyone has to try everything at least once, right? Lord knows he isn't out in the world making stupid choices with his friends. Might as well make them himself. Hizuku walks downstairs, clutching a few, his few finds. He reaches his room and slides open his window and screens swiftly. It's like muscle memory. He taps the bottom of the box and pulls out a clean, untouched roll. The paper is dry on his lips and he can already smell its awful, sticky stench. But he ignores it soon enough. He pushes every single... He pushed just every single thing down as he flicks the lighter and holds it under the fresh tip of the cigarette. Just like that. He inhales, not really realizing at the time how just how big of big his mistake really was. He exhales.